Barbershop Podcast. Coming at you live from Boxo Studio. What's this, episode 95? We're looking at 95, Ryan Cannon? Yeah, we think it's 95. I think it's 95. We lose count sometimes because we're, yeah. we're, we're older gentlemen, and that kind of stuff happens from time to time. And there's so many episodes yeah. it just flowing downhill at a high rate of speed. But we're not going downhill. Are we going downhill? Not even close. Not even close. And we're not going uphill either. What are we doing? We are steady as she goes. <laughs> steady as she goes. Barbershop Podcast coming to you, as I mentioned, from Boxo Studio and from Hamilton, Ontario. Place we like to call the blast furnace of music. It is hot. It is heavy here. And there is so much of it. Uh, Barbershop Podcast brings you the very best in Hamilton music and musicians each and every week. Broadcasting, streaming live on Twitch TV and uh, our archives. We, we still don't have our own Twitch account. No. we got we to talk to the boys at Twitch and see what's going on. Clearly, now. they have not been brought up to date on what no, kind of people no, we are. No, this whole Justin TV switch is not going well. Yeah, Justin TV was... Uh, and, and, and Barbershop Podcast, we like to utilize a smaller independent read, i.e. cheap slash free, people who provide a good service for free and cheap uh, services. Usually free. Usually free. Um, because we think you need to support those kind of businesses who are willing to provide services to us for free, free. or cheap. Yeah. And and Justin TV did a great job of that. And then they switched to Twitch TV. And from what we can tell, it's pretty well the same thing except with a new name. Yeah, but they just they won't let us have our old address. So we yeah. may have to start a new one. Well, or at least a campaign. Yeah. Ryan Cannon, how's it going in there tonight? You got a crazy crew. We got some changes people we got, should know about, it, and they're good changes, right? Yeah, we up we upgraded all our systems here, so things may sound a little funny tonight. They but sound expensive. We're on the road for yeah, everything's sounding a hell of a lot better. So it's good. we're gonna the performances are gonna sound really good tonight. That's for sure. Yeah, and uh, in due time, like anything else, we are going to be slicker than and fill in your dirty little thing there, yeah. whatever slick. <clears throat> I don't want to alienate anyone. Yeah, well, any more than I already do. But uh, we're here uh, each and every week with uh, Alex Baker and Gary Greenland, who are uh, flicking the knobs and turning the dials and helping Ryan Cannon so we can sit back there like Grand Poobah, yeah. ordering them with his stick. Yeah, I got to get back to my my, uh, my Hitler post in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> but out here, I, uh, I've i got the good end of the deal. I get to sit here with another fantastic entertainer, uh, someone from... Hamilton, but who is a world traveler. He is a uh, voracious tourer, uh, singer, songwriter, purveyor, as he puts it, uh, bedroom, uh, f- folk, rock. <laughs> I love it. Sweet, soft, steady. It's good, it's good stuff. We got Kirby in the house tonight. How you doing, sir? Not bad, man. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I've wanted to have you on the show for a long time. Uh, you work with, uh, with Joey Balducci yeah, over yeah. at Spherical Productions. Yeah. He only works with quality acts, interesting people who come in here, and they all embody the same kind of uh, fierce independence, a willingness to, to to play ball. Yeah, understand the nature of the business, do it with a grin on your face, but at the same time, you know you are very proud of what you do, and clearly you've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, it's been. I think I, I quit my my day job. I, I've always had little no, small jobs here and there, but I I started doing this I think full time as it were in two thousand seven two thousand eight, and I met when I, when I met Joey. It's funny you say that he was. You know, works with hardworking people. He wouldn't. He wouldn't like hire me or take me on for a, a tour initially because I'm. I, I'm a guessing. You know, he's a busy guy and he's got stuff to do. But he had this open mic at Che uh, Che Burrito in Hess, and I would. I'd show up at the open mic. It was him and Graham Peaceful from uh, from Blind Mule. Mm-hmm. You know, we're playing, and I show up and play. I was like, put me on the road, put me on the road, put me on the road. It was my friend Amber <laughs> Lee that actually introduced me to Joey. I think at the the Hamilton Music Awards one year. And I, she's like, you got to go talk to the guy. He books bands. And then I, that's when I found out about the open mic and just kept bugging him and bugging him. So I think out of like just sheer annoyance and then hopefully being okay enough, I, I think I'm all right. But, you know, Joey hearing me play, he was like, all right, I'll put you on tour. And I went out for, for two two weeks with my friend Ashley Sloggett from Burlington. And we went out to... Uh, dirty jeans now. Yeah, she's in the dirty... Yeah, she is. I've... Amongst her, amongst her other talent, she yeah, she's a photographer, photographer, writer, yeah. tons of great stuff. Yeah, so she, uh, her, and I went out for two weeks and borrowed my parents' car, and we, we drove out. <laughs> they were nice enough to let me use their car, and drove out to uh, to Vancouver and back, pretty much. And yeah. never, never experienced it. First tour, so I overpacked. I, I, I brought too much crap with me and too many clothes, and it, it was it was an interesting experience driving all through the night, seeing the country for the first time. But yeah, I've been doing that for 
I think I've I think I've crossed the country like 15 times now. Yeah, and and how has it changed from the early days? The thing about Canada, it's such a large country yeah. and there's such a great distance in between centers. And I'm not talking big centers, I'm talking small like towns because it's like you'll get places like Hamilton and and or I was going to say like Edmonton, which remind, kind of reminds me of Hamilton too, but it's it's this awesome country separated by land. Or what's a song called Rocks and Trees or something I heard yeah. the other day, which is it's endless amounts of highway and nature and I don't know how much is, I, I can't say how much has changed in the last five years. The highways are still the same. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Construction always happens in the summer. And, and in, in the States, even when you're in the, some of the northern states that aren't so heavily populated, you're driving from one place to another. It's much more compact. They're yeah. smaller. And you're going to run into what looks like on the map a small town, but that's a college town or it's yeah. a university town. And there's fifteen or 20,000 prime Absolutely, right? People in there, and that doesn't happen in Canada. Not as well. so much. No, like you get you get a lot of empty space. You get a lot of time to think, especially if you're going out east and you yeah. go around the Horn, past Quebec there, and you're you, you stop in Edmonston because like Edmonston, New Brunswick. Edmonston, New Brunswick. That's yeah. where my dad's from. Oh, don't tell, really? Yeah, I think Rock Vizine is from there. Too, <laughs> yeah, a little random fun Fraser fact. Paper. Yeah, but it's 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 just there's such long drives in between. I don't know. I don't know how that. It's, it's weird. All musicians talk about it, but nobody complains about it. I've never really heard any. I've never met another Canadian musician that that's like a gripe. What was the big shock from the first time you did it? Whether you did what you didn't you expect? I didn't. Were, I really didn't realize, and this sounds really really corny, but I didn't realize how beautiful the country was. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because so many so many people I know, like I grew up in Burlington, and I started playing in Hamilton, and been living in Hamilton, off and on for the past five years because like, I've been traveling around. But uh, all the people I have met, like from say high school, I went to college, and everybody works in, like Toronto or something. And nobody goes on holiday to see the country. And I just, by what I get to do, I get to see the country. And I've seen pretty much most of it. I haven't been up north yet, but I've heard, like, I really want to go to, like, the, you know, Northwest Territories, you know, go up there and play. And uh, and none of it is well. I, I don't know if there's any festivals there, but I'm sure there is. There's got to be. There's bound, there's bound there's to be. There's someone like Joey Balducci who knows how to exactly. put on a festival up in, in the Northwest Just haven't got there yet. <laughs> but it's amazing how how dynamically different the country is in just like its geography mm -hmm. and there's parts of like uh you know driving everyone will complain about the prairies oh it's so flat it's awesome it's it is 100, awesome 180 degrees of, of yeah. perfect sky i've got some there's a video i was just comping together i was shooting video on my uh, my last tour and i was going i was pretty much pulling over to the side of the road and recording things out of the back of my my old station wagon before it died and I just looked at the footage two days ago, and it's a be beautiful blue sky, and it's nothing but sky, and, and like fields of like canola and corn and wheat and everything else. And then you get, you know, North, Northern Ontario, it takes two days to get out of Ontario. That's how long, hey, how, right? And, it's and that huge. blew me away going because I assume that north of Thunder Bay, we're talking scrub brush yeah. and land, and the sun's sparkling off the granite on these green blue lakes. Yeah. I was endlessly amazed at how gorgeous the Northern Ontario that, and if, was. You know, to, to answer your question, like that's, that's what took me aback. And not to mention, everybody is so intrinsically Canadian. Everybody's different in their different little cities and their little faint, different accents across the country. But Music fans are music fans. Music fans. And, and I think that's pretty much with everybody in the world that I've met, too. But yeah. it's uh, with Canada, I was like, I was so blown away how awesome it is. And that's what, when people ask me, you know, what's, what's about touring? I'm like, just go and see the country. It's free. Yeah. It doesn't, it just costs gas to get across. You don't need a passport. So, like, if I was, like, you know, doing a, a tourism spot for Canada, that's, like, the only thing I could say. It's so awesome to see. So yeah. why wouldn't you? Well, um, how early on did you start clicking into music as far as being a, someone who played music and someone who wanted to write music? Did it almost happen at the same time? I, I, my, my older brother was the only one that was always into like introducing new music and stuff to me. And I'd always just kind of hear it by proxy. So he'd, he'd be playing, and I remember him playing in like grade six, I think is when I started like actively listening to music and picking up a guitar and pretending I knew how to play. And like writing melody lines, but not really writing songs. And writing, I think I wrote my first song in grade six about a girl, probably. But it was just like really, I, I couldn't even remember how it went because it was all just melody lines I was writing. And it wasn't until high school I started going, oh, that's how you play chords. A friend of mine gave me a stack of like guitar tabs, and I, I had a little chord chart book. So I figured out the chords, and then I started learning the songs that I liked, I was listening to at the time in like grade nine, grade 10. And then that just kind of progressed. I'm like, well, I can play now. Let's see. And I met other friends in high school that were like, yeah, let's, let's make a band. And we'd, we'd jam at our friends' places and put together a really crappy high school band and then did like a, a battle of the bands in grade, I think grade 10 or grade 11. And that was pretty much it. And since then, I've been in bands. And that's just, I was in a band called First Time Fallen out of Burlington for like six years. I thought I thought we were all right. We had a pretty decent like thing what, going. How would you describe the sound of that band? I think now, I, I, we used to say we were alternative. I think it was more like a prog rocky kind okay. of 
thing. It was four guys trying to write songs in a basement. So hey, now that's how it, it all great, starts. It was great though, and it's it's so dynamic. It's so different now because like I write, well, it's it's just me. So I write most mm. of what I'm doing, and I get input from other musicians. But those guys, there's a special place in my heart for those guys because we we'll still get together once maybe once a year and jam or play a show. And it's awesome. It just reminds me of how how different it was back then. Yeah, I mean that's fantastic. Um, we're going to touch on uh, the early days, uh, what you learned, where you've where you've gone, sure. what you've done. But I want to get to a lot of music. What's what we do here at Barbershop Podcast? We like to feature live performers, and you're one of the very very sweet ones. And we've got <laughs> our new system with the new Apollo 16. Uh, looking forward to hearing how this sounds. <laughs> so we're going to throw a couple extra performances and put you on uh, put you on the spot. Going to start off with a live performance tonight. Sure. You got a song you want to tell us about? Yeah, or? there's. Uh, this I'm writing a new record. I'm going to have it out in, in October, um, or not out recording in October, probably out next year. But uh, there's a song I'm doing uh, called Time, and it's a pretty generic title. But I, when I was six, I had trouble tying my shoelaces one day, and we were going out. We were this family outing to a mall, and we uh, I was I was determined to like tie my shoes. I guess I was having problems. My mom was just having none of it, so she like pretty much said, "No, we're leaving." And I threw this big hissy fit. And to this day, my cousins would tease me about like me crying about, I just need more time. I need more time. So I thought I'd like in my later, as I started playing music for a living, they're like, you should write a song called Time. So like out of spite, I thought I'd like make fun of them and write a song about them. But as it turns out, I never seem to have enough time. And when I do leave enough time for projects or things in my life, it runs out. And I feel like I get lucky sometimes where I just get some extra things. And I, there's all the guilt associated with the fact that I've lucked out and I've gotten this means to do it. So from a song that was supposed to be a joke, turned into this like deep introspective thing for me. Where I'm like, I never do have enough damn time for anything I want. So it's a song, song called Time for You. Excellent. At barbershoppodcast.com, here's some Kirby. History, I'm young. The thumb and fingers of a six year old doing his best just to tie my shoes. It's one more lesson we can go. Mama says she won't wait no more. Kicking and screaming, she drags my eyes out to the car. I'm crying time Oh, I need more time I'm passionate and I'm way Slow and ignorance a current state Where a man raised in privilege A man who shouldn't beg for more Well, a man who should know better Than to waste what he's got time for Well, it's all this time Oh, I need more of it Man, my world's gonna end And dear God, I still haven't lived Oh, no, this time No, I don't deserve it But no, I swear I learned how to go on my last turn There's still some From this place, it's out the bodies of the worry and the doubt, trouble, shame. 
shame If I just had time Cause I'm scared I'm gonna get trapped by the horror I paint in my head Over oh, all this time No, I don't deserve it But I'll tie these laces twice as fast Cause there's no musical stylings of Kirby right here at barbershoppodcast.com a man who has traveled the country and traveled the world you were doing the cruise ship gig too, yeah I was you? I was down I, I got this I was I was back from a tour uh, I guess last year and then I was I was all settled in you know I was, I was back at my folks place I tend to stay at my parents place quite a bit when I'm home because I don't really live anywhere <laughs> and uh I was back there I'm like okay I got to do this record because I haven't done a record since 2011 was my last release and uh like it's time to do this thing and get it out and I've been writing and writing since even before that record started and and then I was on Facebook one morning and my buddy just messaged me out of the blue or actually he didn't message me even he just posted on Facebook he's like hey does anybody want to do this this cruise ship thing and I heard about it Mike Shime one of the drummers in town and I we talked about it before and he'd done it and I was like ah, it'd be worth a try and the way this gig worked out was it was a, a acoustic duo so it was me and this guy Ryan McAllister he's a friend of mine um, from Toronto, uh, Kitchener originally, but was living in Toronto. And uh, he said, hey, do you want to try doing this together? So I went up to Kitchener, auditioned, submitted it, kind of forgot about it after two months because they hadn't gotten back. And then three weeks before we left, we got this gig for two and a half months working on a ship out of Australia. So they flew us, they flew us down to, uh, to Sydney and we worked on this ship. It was, it was a different experience because as an artist, you really want to be doing like, you know, tell stories about things about, you know, what you're writing about. And playing Steve Miller band songs like every day of the week kind of gets tired. Like they're great songs, but yeah. you're just like, oh my god, this is a job. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Yeah. But it's not the worst job, and like you can't complain about it no. on a ship because you, you know work... that you're going to do it for a limited amount of time. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So it's you know it's it's a different lifestyle. The people I worked with were like the best I've ever, as far as like a corporate kind of job goes, the best people I've worked with in that in that world. The nicest folks you could meet, and people from all around the world. Met so many great people from Sydney and Melbourne and and the and uh, sorry and uh, Brisbane were the two places I was out of, but uh, really really cool. And I got the opportunity now that I met enough people. They're saying if you want to come down, I met a few families that opened up their homes for me if I want to tour down in Sydney and 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 Brisbane. So it was like a really cool experience to do that. So and I imagine you you made a few fans down a there. Absolutely, too, yeah. Right? It was because you get you play these you play these Friday style kind of nights, and I just mean you know like a party night. Everyone's on holiday, so they want to drink and party. Yeah, it's and, Friday every night, pretty much. <laughs> But, you know, it's not bad. And by the time you, you spend a week or two with these people, you develop relationships and you start chatting with them. You see them every day because you're, you're in the same ship together. But it's, you meet some really, really cool folks. I had a, one of the, the women that uh, on, on the ship there, she had her family with her. She was a music teacher. Came up to me and Ryan one night and said, hey, do you mind if my daughter plays a few songs? And it was just me and Ryan with two acoustics and, and a sound system. Like, yeah, bring her up. Sure, we'll, we'll take a break. Why not? And she got up and played, and this beautiful, just this, I think she was 15, 16, these beautiful songs that she was writing. And they had like 30 people that were traveling with them, and they all were having a great time just like watching this. So it became like this like Friday night bar gig into like a private house concert kind of setting. And it was, it was really cool. Yeah. And that's the same woman that when she left said, hey, if you're in Sydney anytime, stay at our place and you can, you can hang out here. Get, yeah, it. take that to the bank. Oh, that was you great. Know, that, was, great. That, was, that was such a cool just thing to get out of that. Just save yourself $5,000 next time you go to Australia. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. 
you made a, a great little record called Into the Dark. Why don't you tell us about this song or this record about the songs on this record for sure yeah experience it's uh it it was my first one since 2008 and i'd I'd started writing it i think probably 2009 after i started touring a little bit and it took it it finally came out in 2011 and it was just one of those records that i demoed it and then the songs were just kind of like a, a different mix of things i was writing over that period so it wasn't really based around one moment it was just like a collection of songs i had ready to go you know songs about girls about life about kind of coping with change and drinking too much and partying too much um, and then realizing that things well as you have a beer I don't know anything about that <laughs> as, as, but as like it was more like learning about what moderation is because I was like it was my first few years on the road where you're just yeah. like it, it can be non-stop mm-hmm. but uh, I finally got out in 2011 but we started recording at B-Town Sound in Burlington and then that moved from B-Town to my uh, friend and producer Matt Montour in his bedroom studio at the time like tracking like vocals and some other stuff to Sean Pearson's studio when he lived, he, Matt used to live across the street from Sean who also, they worked together. And then they, they at that time bought um, Boxcar, which is now Boxcar uh, Studio. So we went there and finished it. So I kind of lost track of it. it. I liked the record, but by the time it came out, I was just so happy it was done. Yeah. But it, it's, I think it's a great little record. It's definitely a lot poppier than the kind of stuff I'm doing now, but that's what I wanted to write at the time. I wanted like a kind of like a poppy, upbeat record. Any surprises from when you went in and when you came out? I think, I think it was, it was, uh, it's, it's, it's a polished sounding kind of record. I think that's the one thing I was like, wow, I guess that's what I wanted to I do. I am slick. Well, not even that I was <laughs> slick, but like I could make a, a record that sounded that, like uh, not overproduced, but just produced yeah. like that. And I was like, okay, cool. And, and it's, it's a treat when you're used to doing a do it yourself thing and you go in and actually do a record with professionals. So yeah. It's, it's nice. And it was really cool because that's exactly what I set out to make from the beginning. And I think by the time it came out, it had been so much time that I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but that's exactly what happened with it. Well, we're going to lead off with uh, the, the lead off track on yeah. this called Picking Up the Page. Anything about this song? That was a song that was kind of, uh, I, was, I was reading an issue of Canadian Musician one day, and everybody gets, <laughs> every musician I know seems to have a copy of it. And it was one of those issues where like you recognize somebody on the cover. I'm like, oh, cool, I'll read the article. So I flipped it open, and like every second page was somebody I recognized. And it was just people that were doing well. And I got into this like, overly jealous and like really not hatred but i was like why am i not in the magazine yeah. i play music but the thing was these people had worked hard and, and deserved to be there and I, I spent like an entire day being lost in jealousy and and stupidity not realizing that you shouldn't bother doing that you're just picking up a page as it were just do what you need to do and eventually if, if it works out for you it does but not to worry about things like that to waste your time with it there you go it's been said that music is emotion that you can hear and there's the birth of a song uh, from Kirby into the dark, a little something called Pick Up the Page, barbershoppodcast.com.
Pick it up the page right there, little Kirby on barbershoppodcast.com. It is a slick machine here, I tell you. 95 weeks, 95 episodes. We're only five weeks away from number 100, Ryan Cannon. And I know we've got yeah. some, we got a few dirty things planned for the 100th episode. It's going to be a good time. Um, it's a big secret, though. We have to keep it under wraps. But trust us, in five weeks. Yeah, it's we got we got some cool stuff under our hats. Yeah, you're either going to hear it or you're going to hear about it. Yeah. But it's going to be good times. We're here with Kirby. Kirby, a purveyor of bedroom folk rock. He can do it all. He is a, an entertainer, a writer. He's a techie. Uh, he's a historian. Uh, humorous, intelligent guy, and you tend to get that with your musicians. Go support live music. Come out to the places that support live music and support the places that support Barbershop Podcasts. And one of those places we're going to support Ryan Cannon after the show is Shenanigans. We're going to go see our friends at Shenanigans, and we're going to have some pizza. We're going to have some wings. Uh, we're going to have a couple of wobbly pops and we're gonna have a good time because they are like us purveyors of good times i've never been i'm excited to yeah go. you're gonna you're, we're gonna bring curb with us nice. and you're gonna check it out they're right across uh from delta high school at 1305 main street east in hamilton ontario they've got all kinds of great food specials and drink specials um whatever you like you're gonna find it in there they've got i think six teams in their pool league they got disgruntled dad tuesdays <laughs> What's yeah. disgruntled dad Tuesday? You no idea. In, yeah, you go in there on Tuesday and you sit there and you get disgruntled with the other guys. I like it. Yeah. I like it. That's like, clever. I like it. It is, and uh, they're 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 clever bunch of people, and uh, yeah, really really enjoy our time when we're in there. Ryan and I like to eat. You know, you may not know that, but when we go in, they are constantly saying, "Try this." Try that, and everything is good. Everything is good. The uh, what we have, they have pulled pork poutine. That was pretty good. Tasty. Triple P. You get that, <laughs> uh, and the pizzas are uh, handmade. This is not factory food. You know, it's uh, quality it's, homemade. It's, it's food. quality, you know, homemade food. They do it right there. Shenanigans, uh, thirteen oh five Main in Hamilton, Ontario. That's between Kenilworth and Ottawa. Um, go support them because they support us. So let's talk about support in the community. Being a musician in the music community eventually it doesn't take long there's something else that draws you and keeps you in there other than just the music talk yeah, about that no you're right it's it's uh I, I spent my first when i first started i spent a lot of time at uh oh geez it's now absinthe and i can't remember the pepper jack yeah when that was when that was still when that was still going and i go to the open mics all the time and it was the first time i started playing solo ever like i, I was in a band for it was in that first time and first time falling for a number of years and never really Never really got out on my own. Always wanted to, but never got out on my own to do anything about it. So when I, when our old band, when First Time Fallen stopped playing, I'm like, I'll go, to, I'll go out to open mics and I'll, I'll do it. And I'm worried about what people would think, like any songwriter does, anybody that's never been on stage like by themselves before. So at least I had the guitar to stand behind. But I got out there and I remember playing it and everybody just, everybody being so supportive of being there. It was like always a rush to sign up, but nobody... It wasn't one of those places like where you go play and yeah, it never looks at you when you walk in the door like who is this person? No, in? like there's always the regulars like the but there was never I never felt a sense of people trying to be like like you know exclude me from Proprietary. anything. Proprietary. Yeah. So so supportive about like yeah. what you're writing and you'd meet other guys that would want to jam and that's how I've kind of always done it. And now I find myself spending most of my time in venues. I still go to open mics to try out new stuff and and see what everybody else is doing because it's. It, you start realizing how much more you love music because people are just telling their own stories, however they're telling them yeah. with music, and it's so it's it's just a, an awe inspiring thing to see, and that's what I I love about going out to see music in general. Yeah, and that I, started with those open. Months. I can't tell you how many times I'm not a young man anymore, but I'll go out, and sometimes it'll be later, and I'll say, "Oh, I said I was going to go out. I want to go out." It doesn't tend to start till a bit later. Yeah, yeah. And I'll go out and have a couple drinks and think, I'm going to be tired the next day. But I bounce out of bed because there were so many laughs, yeah. you know, and you're crying for the right reason absolutely, because you're absolutely. laughing and you're creating. Yeah. That that takes over. I mean, you can tell there's a physiological benefit. There's something that, about the community and that aspect that just kind of sticks to you when you walk in there. I went to um, Fox and Fiddle last night to see Mary Simon's band play, the uh, Miss Mississippi, Mississippi Bands. Bands, yeah. I hadn't seen Mary. I hadn't seen Mary in a while. Got there, and I just been. It's one of those days since I've been home. I've been getting the record ready and been demoing and, and doing all this this grant stuff, and and just been sitting in my office slash studio slash bedroom, trying to get ready for this. And I was like, well, do I really want to go out? I'm been, you know, it's it's getting late. But I went, and my my whole dynamic just changed like that. And I was like, this is why you come out. Yeah. And it was me and Sarah Beatty and, and and a bunch of other people just hanging out there, 
watching watching the Mississippi Benz play and it was great and it was just I was like that's why I come to live music because it changes my attitude and yeah. my perspective I was getting song ideas which I'm like that's why I love going to see live music yeah. you got to do it you got to do it drag yourself out anytime it's a Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday somewhere that you're gonna find just go that. and especially in Hamilton yeah you know that's why I was used to live out west for a bit and they they have live music you know where the little town I was living in but it wasn't like Hamilton where you can go out every night and find something there's so many venues and there's so much good music not just from Hamilton alone, but always coming through because the city's being no, is getting known more so for that. Yeah, now. it used to be a, 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 a well kept, not a well kept secret, but um, we enjoyed the fact that we had a great body of musical yeah. uh, talent here, and weren't too in, interested in shouting it out to the world. <laughs> but the people from across the country would know. Yeah, people in Winnipeg and Montreal would go, "Oh, you're from Hamilton." That's and they would list off a bunch of people that. You know what? Half the people in this town don't know who they are. That's, that's exactly. great that they're actually known. Let's hear a little bit more uh, great live music. It's something we Absolutely. love here at Barbershop Podcast. You do it so well. Absolutely. I'll, I'll play a song. I wrote this. Uh, this is a new song. It's going to be on, on the new record. It's. Uh, I have a tendency in the last few years, for some, some reason, I started sleepwalking a little bit. I don't know why. Usually after I've had a bit to drink, but that's fine. And I was, I was in New York City, and uh, I was staying at a friend's place, and... Uh, I had a crush on this, this friend I was staying with, this, this girl I was staying with, but it's, it's since come and gone, just one of those things, right? She's a great person, we're still friends to this day, but i just gone out with a friend, of, another friend of mine in, 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 in uh, Midtown, and we were hanging out in the village too, and, and I got home, and I went to bed, I was, I was, you know, had a bit to drink, but went to bed, and then I woke up in the morning, and she's like, do you, do you remember last night? And I'm like, oh no, that's never a good thing to start with. No. Ever. So I was like, no. And she's like, oh, well, you, you accidentally, you know, where I was staying was like the bathroom, her room, and then my room. And I just I got up in the middle of the night and wandered into her, her bed, mm -hmm. which is embarrassing enough as it is, you know. Like, we're friends. She was nice enough to let me stay at her place. And now I'm like, like yeah. looks like I'm sneaking into yeah. bed with her. When in fact, you're just half asleep. Pretty much. And she, so she's like, no, no, you're fine. It's just, are you, are you all right? I'm like, well, I haven't done it that much. But so I... I wrote the song where, like, you know, ideally that would have been great if that was the place I was staying, but that's not the way it happened as far as, you know, that room. So she, she kind of put me, put me away, as it were, back to my, my, my place and my bed and let me be. So I, I got up the next morning, kind of after I found out all ashamed and, and apologetic. Yeah. She was cool. She was like, no, don't worry about it. It happens. Your very own redemption song. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So I wrote this, this song about that, and it's, uh, it's kind of like, I think it was better that I was sleepwalking because I was still in the dream, so I didn't quite know that it was being dismissed. I was just kind of happy to be in that place but um it's better to be almost in that dream than being put away so this is a song called put me put me away right here barbershoppodcast.com Consequences for this flame that shakes his fire gets you awake that I don't remember your touch of grace that laid me down my silly head. After it found its way into your bed, it woke me up. Put me away. Now I don't know lately With this scribble brain And the pictures it shapes And what they mean and say Man, it kept me burning Until your rain Failed to put me out But just a touch of grace you laid me down My worried head After it took to wandering Into your bed It 
woke me up to put me away put me away and I've been thinking too much dreaming too loud I've been hoping enough time will pass to tell if I burn it all up my ruins remain yeah, there ain't no worry there ain't no pain there ain't no consequences just my fire and your grace that laid me down this almost man His words kept secret Cause you wouldn't understand That the dream of fire Is better than When you wake me up Put me Kirby is putting us away right here at barbershoppodcast.com. The control and the sound Ryan Cannon. Wow, that's a $3,500 well spent, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's incredible. It's better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. We're, it's only going to get better, too. Like, I know. We're, we're, we, we haven't even really had time to tweak it today. It's, we, we've been dealing with all the other fun bullshit of... <laughs> yeah. pulling all the wires out and plugging them back in again <laughs> it's like you don't get to see you you assume that there's uh uh you know when we say the show's going to start at eight we honestly really want to start you really the show. Want we do yeah. Yeah. Our, our, i saw the guys running around today trying yeah. to get it going. Just, so when we start at nine we weren't spending the whole no. time playing parcheesy we were panic mode for the last <laughs> hour before we started we even had a false start too so, so if, if anyone was waiting to watch maybe somebody actually caught that false start and you're the, the lucky person anyways <laughs> anyways but a new piece of technology does a beautiful job i want to get a sponsorship from, from yeah you. paula needs to sponsor yes. us <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know what they're going to give us. We, we, we've already bought all their gear. So. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some free plugins. But they do a great job. And Boxo Studio, we strive for this kind of stuff. And it's yeah. that extra 10%, but it's boy, oh boy. It's like having, cooking a good steak and cooking a great steak, you know, the difference. And I'm so happy that you could be the first one to come I'm happy, in. I'm happy to help work out the kinks. That's yeah. part, of, part of why I'm here, right? Well, and, and it's solo act. We didn't have like a six-piece band where they're sitting around pulling the thumbs <laughs> waiting, yeah, right? Yeah, Or uh, six chances for something to screw up, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. We're hearing it. Um, and we love it. We love bringing you music all the time. I what wanna... a cool what a cool setup, I gotta say. This is this is great. I've, I've been to a few different places where they've done, I had a friend of mine that used to do something similar down in, in Niagara, or over Niagara Falls, and and it's the same thing. It's just it's amazing how much how much work that you're not seeing right now that goes into all of this stuff that's coming out. So you guys are doing it. I think it's this is awesome. Great, you know, and I'm still blown away that someone you know f flicking around in Australia or or Germany or anywhere yeah. in the world can watch us live Absolutely, right, right now. This is it just still blows me away. You know who Brian Cannon, UrbanHamiltonArtist.ca. Hamilton artists? Are you a Hamilton artist? I'm a Hamilton artist. You're a Hamilton artist. I'm a Hamilton artist. artist. Hamilton artist. Yeah. And as a Hamilton artist, you're constantly looking to promote. You're looking to promote uh, and advertise who you are, what you do, uh, shows. Um, and I want to talk about HamiltonArtist.ca, uh, Bob and Maggie uh, over there, as well as Lindsay, uh, who is uh, a great uh, uh, artist over there, making custom wear for musicians. They put uh, anything on anything. If you want a t-shirt, if you want a mouse pad, you want a mug, you want um, 
a button, you want anything that's going to promote your business, they put anything on anything. They specialize in promotional material uh, for uh, events, performances, um, not just musicians, but anyone in a, in, in a situation who has a concept or has a show as something that they want to advertise, they will work with you. If you've got an idea, um, they'll work with event planning. It's a community. And the people at HamiltonArtist.ca uh, over there uh, at the Delta. And Hamilton, if you know, if you're from Hamilton, you know where the Delta is. That's where King becomes North and Maine becomes South, right by Gage Park, right by the Bright Spot, another great landmark, if you know where that is. Where the No Frills is, it's between, again, that area around bordered by Ottawa Street and Gage Avenue here in Hamilton, Ontario. HamiltonArtist.ca, go see them. They'll do your banners, your shirts, your mugs, so much more. 1141 Main Street East, and they're at Balmoral. Go see them. We certainly do. They do great stuff for us. Uh, I want to have a shout-out for uh, Alec Bromke, who's in the studio tonight. He was Ooh. one of the first people who jumped in. He is a uh, amazing producer, amazing engineer who's worked with some of the greats in the business and our uh, benefit album we're doing for uh, mental health awareness. He stepped up to the plate and has done some great work and he decided he was going to come in and uh, hang out and see what we're doing tonight. So I didn't want to overlook him. It's a bit of a crowded crowded room back busy, there. Busy control booth. There's tonight. twice as many people in the control booth as, as in the, as in the live room. some more in there for next As week. in the live room. So speaking about the live room... If you put on a Kirby CD, you're going to have a live room, okay? They call it bedroom music for a reason. Girls <laughs> like this stuff. He's touchy-feely in all the right places. <laughs> and he writes some good songs. Uh, we're going to talk about the next one we're going to put on called High Horse. Is this about someone who's on a high horse? About I, some- Yeah, I think it's about kind of realizing that somebody, you know, somebody that knows how to push your buttons really well and you kind of lose your cool and, and you feel like they've, 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 you have certainly not. You're not in the same level they are, and they're, they probably might have a point. Maybe they don't have a point, but they're certainly above you. And it's it's kind of written from the standpoint that you're asking them, you know, for your this part of your soul back that they've taken because you've lost your cool. Even though they might be, you know, they might be on this high horse and think that, you know, you think they're wrong, but you know, from that perspective, you know, everything looks wrong when you're down that low. So it's a song about trying to politely ask for that piece of your your soul bad that you let get exposed because you lost control where they were on their high horse tearing you down. So. Wonderful. Music like it used to be. You can still get it right here at barbershoppodcast.com.
You got Kirby on his high horse. You're going to hear that record. And it's called Into the Dark by Kirby. Another great, great offering from Hamilton, Ontario. Blast Furnace of Music and Barbershop Podcast, the very best of Hamilton music and musicians. Every week we have a long-form interview show with some awesome live performances. And we will showcase uh, local independent talent. We're about independence. We're about truth. We're about honesty. We're about the good stuff. Um, screw the man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn the man. Damn the man. Lord knows uh, I owe him enough money. So yeah, he's still. got enough money and he's pushing us around and uh, times are changing, right? Mm. We don't have to get in line and uh, you can do your own thing. And it's the Wild West out there in internet world and we are cowboys. And we're doing pretty good. And proud to bring it to you every week. We've got an incredible slick performance going on here. <laughs> I tell you, it's slicker than Slick Willie. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly got lots of grins and uh, happy to bring it to you. I um, want to talk about um, kind of a mission statement that you bring forward in music. Um, you're not an old guy, but you're not a young guy anymore. No, no, I just, just turned 32 this past August. So. And that's about an age where you start taking a look at yourself. You're, Isn't you're, that right? Yeah, yeah your, your 30s, you got everything, or your 20s, you got everything figured out. In your 30s, you start reassessing and kind of pulling the pieces out. Yeah. And then you, you start over again yeah. in, in 10 years with what you're learning now in your 30s. Music is constantly giving that yin and yang where it provides the sustenance emotionally, but it doesn't provide the sustenance as far as security yeah. goes. How do you balance going forward and having faith in what you're doing is the right path? It's scary as hell. And every time I get home and it's, I think it's you know, part of the reason, like I'm, I'm really lucky when I come home, I was saying earlier, I could, I'll stay at my folks place for a little while. And I, it's happened a few times where I'll come back from a tour, you know, crash there for like a month, crash there for a few months and then move either. Like I was living in Hamilton most recently and then go back on the road and do something else and stay with friends here in Hamilton. And you get back and when you have time to kind of calculate what the hell you're doing, every time I get back, I always get worried that I'm making the wrong choice. And it's not that I don't have faith in what I'm doing, but you start looking at, you know, you spend too much time on Facebook or looking at everybody else's lives or anybody else's career. And the thing I keep forgetting a lot of the time is that it's, it's whatever I'm doing is my own mm -hmm. and it'll take as much time as I want in defining what it is I want to get out of it. And I, I, you know, I want to make a career of doing this. I seem to be doing okay with it. Every time I go out, everything gets a bit better. You learn a bit more. And, you know, I, I've, I've done tons of different jobs that are kind of associated with music, not just touring, like writing, helping produce records, writing on records, um, working in side projects that are associated with music, but like, like doing film assist stuff, like production assistant stuff, and all these little things, but it's all based around the arts. And the thing I love about being a musician and an artist is that you you meet all these kind of people, so you start finding other places to do it. So the fear is more so when I'm not busy, when mm -hmm. I get back and have too much time to worry about things or, yeah. or spend my time worrying. And that's not to say nobody else does, but I think it's easy to lose perspective when you start fretting about the things that aren't that important, like money. Is it ever? Is and it's, it ever? And it's, I, get, I get money's important to an, ex, to an extent, and I, it certainly is for some people, but... I just want to make sure that I'm happy doing what I'm doing because I know if I went back, I used to work in advertising for like... Geez. Soul sucking business. Yeah, mm. well, it, wasn't, it wasn't bad, but I have friends of mine are still in it and they love it and that's great and I think that's cool. It just wasn't for me and I knew when I started touring, like doing this, this is what I love to do. It's just, it's, it's keeping that perspective because if I went back to a job, I'd hate it within a yeah. week. It kind of ruins you for everything else once you've been it on does. stage. It does. Really, my mm. father said that. My first yeah. tour, my dad was a, is a drummer, is a jazz drummer. Doesn't, doesn't play a lot anymore. I've been trying to get him to like join a band, like a weekend warrior band. He's in his 60s now. And I was like, you got to just join something. He's got this beautiful, like I think it's a, a 70s, like uh, green, Gr shimmery Ludwig. Grinch. Okay, kit. cool. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm it was great. It's great. It's, and yeah. we still have it. He was going to sell it. I'm like, you can't sell it. I don't yeah. have it set up, but like, I need, I need you For to keep sure. that forever. But uh, he told me when I was that first tour, he needed some touring around Ontario when he was in, in university and, and just a bit beyond. He was like, you're, you're not going <laughs> to, he's like, you're not going to want to do anything. Like he's like, you're not going <laughs> to come back. Yeah, you're right. And it's funny because like, we're such, me and my dad, we're so similar. I'm like, he's right. Every time I come back, like I went to go work for a little bit out West. I, I was going to take a break like maybe half a year and go, you know, work and make some money. And, and it was great. I had a great community of people I was around. I was working in an arts-based magazine uh, doing stuff. 
with the intention of staying there, but I couldn't, I played one show, a house show, with this guy named Rick Leaf was doing a house show and he brought me up for a song. And the re, it was a great little house show and I was like, I can't not tour. I have to go back on the road. I have to go out and be doing music somehow. So I realized that I, when I come back and worry about these things, I'm like, just, sure, that's gonna be, that's gonna happen, but you're still gonna have to do music. Because the only thing really that's that fulfilling that what I get to do now mm -hmm. and stuff surrounding artists are art based kind of thing something that's that has meaning to it excellent you know what has meaning to it your next song that you're going to play live <laughs> for us I'm digging it I'm digging the way it sounds I want to hear it I want to hear some more Kirby sure this is a, I'm playing a bunch of new stuff just because I've uh, it's a place to do it you got a I'm, sweet, oh, hey, sweet why not? I'm, recording. I'm stoked to do it I'm stoked to do it <laughs> there's a if you are interested kirbysings.com you can find all the links to some other stuff there um, other music as well but this is a song that I don't know what it was really about initially. It's called Dark Room, and it's, uh, I think it's about this, we were talking about having faith in yourself and, and, and you know, not worrying too much about what to expect. And I think when I look at things like love and stuff like that, I was, I was writing this song, and it's kind of based on the expectation, not just love with another person, but loving something that if you have enough belief in it and you give enough of yourself to it, no matter how bad it gets, it'll always be there for you. And it might seem like you're kind of alone and enclosed and... That's where I think that being in a room or a dark room, being isolated, is is the case of it. So this is a, a song that's kind of it's kind of based around a, a love like a guy and a girl kind of love story thing. But it's it's supposed to be more about <clears throat> excuse me that undying passion for something that if you love it enough and you and, and you believe in it enough, it, it'll 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 help you in the back end. Message of positivity right here, barbershoppodcast.com. scared with me then but just told me instead it's a dark room it's cold you're alone I'll be right there to love you the whole oh it's a dark room such a dark room Such a dark room, 
such a dark, dark room. Kirby right here at barbershoppodcast.com. Beautiful song. Some new stuff. He's going to go in and going to record them and you're going to get to hear them. Another great Hamilton artist that we're up to some shenanigans with. <laughs> Loving that. Loving our sponsors. HamiltonArtist.ca. Shenanigans. You go support the people who support us. And we support live music. We support the people who support live music. So if you open up your View magazine or you open up your... See them right there. Whatever. You see it right there. Find out who supports it and say, these guys got music. I'm going to go there. Tonight, I'm going to go and get me some music. It's good for the soul. Why not? It's good for the soul. So has there been a... Uh, I don't want to call it a guilty pleasure. Uh, I want to uh, perhaps... Uh, expose an artist, someone who you've fallen in love with in the last little while. But, you know, what? I was I was mentioning Sarah B- uh, Beatty and uh, uh, Mary Simon. I, and Mary Mary's uh, Mississippi Mississippi Kings. Benz Benz Kings. Yeah. I'm thinking of somebody else. Sorry, Mississippi Benz. They've got a new record coming out. I think soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I it was the first time I'd seen them, and it was just because Sarah had mentioned them to me. Sarah, I, I'd met at uh, Folk Music Alliance, uh, like officially. We knew kind of of each other, I think, but not really met. Um, and I remember getting her record there and I was like, wow, she's, and I've, I've since searched her out and we, we have some mutual friends, but I was trying to set up some time that we can co-write together. Cause it's just really great, beautiful storytelling. Mm-hmm. And I love that about it. I think that's one thing <coughs> if I had to do something better, like a lot better with my own writing from my perspective, it's maybe tell a story a bit better, a bit more vividly. Kind of like if you read Edgar Allan Poe's, uh, 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 the Raven, you can read Edgar Allan Poe's words and you can see what he's saying, mm-hmm. you know? And with Sarah, I find... You know, that's not that she's Edgar Allan Poe in, in that kind of sense, but the, the the vividness with which she writes, I can see the scene that she's talking about, and that really took me back. And mm. and then the style of, of the Mississippi Bends when I heard them play, and, and some of the songs Mary was was playing last night too, I'm like that kind of stuff was like I was like, okay, that's why I like going to see live music. That's why I like having the friends and being in this community so I can yeah, see cause that. Yeah, because if right? the knock on on someone for not checking them out is because you don't know who they are, what a great opportunity! <laughs> oh, it's perfect. It's perfect, and that's it's. You get a question sometimes as an artist when you do interviews or whatever, and people are like, oh, well, what's your what's your biggest influence? And I tell people it changes because I play with. I'm lucky enough to play with so many different people, like just in, on different shows. If you see somebody that night that you're just like, wow, that guy's there was this guy named James Lamb out in in Vancouver. Or not? No, he's not in Vancouver anymore. He's in Smithers, BC. This 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 little mountain town in Smithers. Smithers. <laughs> but man, is he a great songwriter? And I'm not quite sure what he's doing now. I haven't heard a bit from him. I know he was he was touring with Dave Newberry, these friends of mine out west. But um, those guys and Corwin Fox. There's so many bands that are just and different artists I play with. But locally, like especially Sarah and Mary, just really really great artists and worth checking out. Excellent. Another thing worth checking out. It is a little shot in the dark, into the dark, Bum Kirby. Uh, his most recent record that you can get. I'm sure you can get it from your website. Yep, kirbysings.com. You can check it out there. Kirbysings.com. Um, we're going to play another track right here from Barbershop Podcast. Uh, this one is called, I believe, Into the Dark. Into the Dark, the title track, yeah. And uh, well. it, that was a, <laughs> it was a song I wrote that was... Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. It was. Uh, it's, it's, I was kind of talking about passion and stuff before, but it was. It's a relationshipy kind of song that, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, that maybe you're in a kind of relationship. And I, I was basing it off of one I used to be in, and I think when I look back on it now, it's only just a memory of what it was, right? But I, I think of it as if it was that this one big relationship at the time. But it's those kind of relationships that you're in that you you can argue with each other, but you're not going anywhere, and you're gonna you're, you'll stay with them all the way to the, the bitter end. Yeah. So there's there's a, there's a line in there about. <laughs> Somebody throwing something at them, and and you're hoping it's not you're hoping it's not the girlfriend throwing the gift you got her because it took you forever to find it. <laughs> the perfect gift, right? So yeah, <laughs> perfect heft and weight and accuracy. A <laughs> little bit of uh, Kirby right here into the dark of barbershoppodcast.com. If you're 
the title track into the dark from kirby great little record you're going to be able to get from kirby sings dot com. com you got the big one uh-huh. right here at barbershoppodcast.com tell your friends if you love music if you love originality if you love the real stuff if you love someone doing it <laughs> <laughs> on a weekly basis <laughs> Then tell people about Barbershop Podcast. It's a great show. We have a great time. Every week someone comes in, blows us away. What do you got planned? What do you got coming up in the next little while? Well, now that I'm finally back, I'm kind of, I've been back for about a month from, from Australia and, and I've got a record I'm working on. So I'm just working on demos. I'm, I'm going to be recording here in Hamilton over a boxcar just, just down the street from actually the studio here. And uh, yeah, so I'm just working, finishing up some demos and we're going to go in and track the record. And I'm, I've got big plans, but I just hope they can kind of come to fruition. I met these people down in Australia, so I'd like to go down and, and tour Australia. I've got family living in, in Europe that I want to go see. And a lot of the musicians that I worked with on the ship, on the cruise ship, um, I got in, invites to go play like in Malaysia and Romania oh, and, so good. and Serbia. And, and just people that I know, they're like, if yeah. you're ever going to come through, we'll set up something. And we, I've had conversations with three different bands that I worked with on the ship that were like, the funny part about the Serbian one was the guys from this band, uh, it was a Good Times band from Serbia, and a uh, great bunch of guys, they grew up, or they're, they're from, two of them are from this little town that's right beside where my grandfather's from, and he has he left when he was six. So I was like, oh, I've wanted to go there. So he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll take you there, and we'll do a little tour of Serbia. I'm like, okay. so if I can get that set up, 
But for now, I know I'm, I'm doing the record at, recording in October, probably be launching with some, some new videos. I want to do more video content and, and I love making video. I think it's so much fun and yeah. there's so many awesome artists, uh, you know, everywhere really, but there's some great filmmakers here in Hamilton too that you can work with just to make some interesting stuff. Yeah, but you get it out there and you it's a do-it-yourself do world. Absolutely. You know? and, then, and why wouldn't you do that when you've, it's so easy to do now and there's so many cool people making cool stuff like that that you can find out that want to work with you. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing that with the new record, and then I know initially I'll do a Canadian tour probably in the springtime and hopefully festival season coming up. So lots of big plans, um, a lot to tour or grant writing and stuff I got to I got to get get to, and hopefully I can make this all happen. But I'm not I'm it's exciting to to talk about and to do because I'm so happy to be back doing that kind of stuff now and, and just getting. Well, we're back happy you're doing, doing it. it for sure, and and I'll be playing with a band this time, which would be great. It's always great. I tell you, a spherical production, recording, performing artist, Kirby. Uh, KirbySings.com. Check out his stuff. Um, be a fan. Be a follower. I know I am. He's going to give us one more uh, brand new song, right? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a slow one, but it's it's one of my favorites. And it's, uh, it's a song I wrote. Uh, it kind of it references a band uh, from Hamilton called the Dinner Bells. I don't know if you've had them on I love or not, them. But, Aren't they a great band? They're was, a great band. All so, of them are they're great. They're so good. Tara, I was just chatting with Tara Lightfoot. Um, uh, not to name drop, but just chatting with her the other day. We ran into each other, and, and I mentioned the song to her. And uh, I wrote this. The Dinner Bells were playing at Come Together Festival in, uh, in, in Frontier Town, up near Owen Sound. It's a great festival. They have three times a year. Um, and I, 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 I had seen this girl from a distance. I write a lot, a lot of songs about women. It happens. But... Uh, she was she was standing a very very pretty very attractive girl and I'm like I can't talk to her I have nothing to say so I, I played my set and luckily she was taking photos so I was like okay cool I've got an in so I walked over to her I said hey I'd love to grab those photos off you you know she's like yeah I'm like do you have a card she's like yeah so she gave me all her information I said I guess I don't have to ask for your number now yeah. and I was really cheesy and did really she cool. did she just dead face you she laughed <laughs> okay, she laughed good. she thought You're it was in. funny which was great so then we hung out you know we hung out most of the day and got to know each other a bit and. Uh, and is that a, a euphemism for no 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 no, okay. no 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 we we literally were just chatting okay, and hanging and got out got to know and, each other a bit and, and and she thought I was at least thought I was funny which I, mm -hmm. I took from it and as as the night drew on and and we we kind of started dancing I asked her if she wanted to dance she said yeah I'm like this is going so well and the dinner bells came on and we were dancing the dinner bells and it kind of slowed down a bit and I figured the day had been going so well you know I'll I'll, I'll go for broke I'll lean in and try to and, and see if I can if this if it should give me a kiss. So I went in to kiss her, and I kind of stopped and looked at her, like I held her there for a second, as if to say, like, I'm going to kiss you, please don't hit me, because this has been great. But I was thinking if that, you know, if everything went terrible, and if it didn't work out, you know, luckily, you know, I had that moment, and that, that, that song, that band, that dance, that festival, so it was just that, that one, one moment in time was perfect. Luckily, she kissed me back, and, and it, it worked out really well for a little bit, but at least at that moment, that's all I was thinking about, that things, at least for that time, were good. Inspired by a great, great Hamilton band, The Dinner Bells. Got a brand new one from Kirby here at barbershoppodcast.com. Dinner bells are ringing in our head. As I sweep your hair back with my fingertip Oh, and I don't know what's led to all of this But I'm going in There's a million and a half different reasons I believe Oh, it's got me touching you and you touching me Oh, if this is for tonight, then I'll concede A bit of defeat But if you let me up I won't slam your door Cause I can tell It's been slammed before When I could be Who you've been waiting for I got so much more 
dizzy down dip our lips now skin on skin with the ripples of our kisses echoing echoing across the floor we're dancing on as people stare with the envy of we both know is going And I can fly Oh no, and I got darling dear It's been quite some time Oh, if this was a trap You've ensnared me in a lie Well, you're good at faking love And at least I tried But if you let me up, I'll take off my shoes and hold you close, sitting on that real man do. And don't you know I got so much more for you? If you let me up. Let me up Oh, let me up Ooh. Oh, the dinner bells are ringing in our head Oh, no, the dinner bells are ringing in our The sweet sounds of Kirby, bringing you original music, bringing you new music here at barbershoppodcast.com. And you're going to hear that every Wednesday. Mr. Kirby, I'm so, so happy that you made it in tonight. I'm Thank so you so much glad for having me. You. you know what? It was a great time. Uh, we got to debut our new upgrade to the sound system. And when you hear it, you're going to be as spun as I am. My <laughs> God, does it sound good. I'm excited for it. Yeah, things are cooking here at Boxo Studio. Looking forward to the work that we've got coming in through the door, what we're doing going forward. And uh, I love doing this podcast. I love sharing it with everyone out there in uh, <clears throat> the world. Internet land. Internet land. Anyone who's <laughs> got a uh, one of these, anyone who's got a computer, anyone who's got a smart TV, can get us, and I hope you do get us. So, for uh, Alec Bromke, Gary Greenland, Alex Baker, and of course, my compadreo Ryan Cannon, I want to thank you. thank you for coming and joining us at Barbershop Podcast. This great episode number 95 with Kirby. We're going to be back next week with Mr. Scotty Backlar. Oh, I can't oh, wait for that one. I know. Good buddy of mine. He is yeah, amazing. Everybody loves Scotty. I love that guy. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah, we're going to have a good time. And we do. We, me and him got some stories, man. I might have to come on the couch. <laughs> you might have week. to come on the yeah, couch. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll bring him back out from outside. Well, you know what? It's been great. It's going to continue to be great. We're not going anywhere. Thanks for coming out. Take care. <laughs>